It is the master tool, hard enough to bite through iron, yet precise enough to finish a jewel. But this creates a fundamental engineering paradox. If a file is designed to cut through steel, what is strong enough to cut the file? Today, we travel deep into the Burgesses land, the legendary heart of German metallurgy, to witness the brutal and precise process of how steel cuts steel. The Ailis File Factory is picturesquely located in the Eschbach Valley near Remscheid. The facility, which includes a family villa and industrial buildings for file production, was largely built between 1830 and 1900. The factory provides an authentic look into mechanized file production as it was in the early 20th century. Files are made from high-quality tool steel through numerous production stages. First, the raw material is cut. This consists of steel rods ranging in length from 2 meters to 3.5 meters. Juan Molano Bote, one of the five employees in file production, feeds the steel rods into the splitting press. This machine cuts the raw material into pieces of equal length. Here, flat files are being processed, as indicated by the cross-sectional shape of the steel pieces. Their shape matches the profile of the file to be manufactured. A press is used to punch out the so-called shoulder, or perforated, as file makers say, so the tang can be forged. Tang refers to the tapered end of the file. A wooden or plastic handle is eventually attached to this tang. The perforated pieces are then worked on by skilled filesmith Friedel Steinkemper at the forging hammer. The blanks are heated in the forge to the usual temperature of 950 to 1000 degrees Celsius. Forging is a highly skilled job. It requires working with intuition, as company owner Horst Ailis emphasizes, an art that one must master. After forging, the blanks are soft annealed in a furnace. This means they are heated to approximately 780 degrees Celsius for four hours. They are then allowed to cool slowly to achieve the necessary material structure. Now the worker must check the shape, which may have warped slightly during the annealing process, and straighten it if necessary with a handheld hammer. Grinding the file blank in the grinding machine. This removes the scale that settled on the surface of the blank during forging. The machine is a proprietary design by the Alis company, as is the sanding machine used in the next step. Anna Katik operates the sanding machine for flat files. Here the file blanks are fed on a conveyor belt lengthwise under a rotating sanding stone. Sanding is used to achieve a matte surface on the workpieces for the later application of the teeth. Let's now turn to the processing of half-round files. Half-round files are slightly tapered. Friedel Steinkemper forges the tip using a hammer with a movable swivel anvil. He shapes it in the recess of the anvil. Files are distinguished by their cross-sectional shape. There are many shapes for different uses, the most common being flat, half-round, round, triangular and square files. Standard files are processed on the grinding machine. For other types, a large wet grinding stone, called a knee stone, is used. During wet grinding, the worker uses covers and knee pads to protect themselves from moisture, which can lead to rheumatic conditions. Working with natural stone used to be even more harmful, causing the lung disease silicosis. 
Today, artificial stones are mandatory. In the Alice file factory, the stone is driven by an electric motor, with power generated by a water turbine and generator at the time of filming. Before grinding, the file is inserted into a grinding wood. The appropriate grinding wood is used depending on the type of file. The half-round files are now sanded on the machine. Inside, cross-arranged sanding belts provide the desired matte surface. Files are used in many industries such as machine, tool or model making, precision mechanics and the jewellery industry, but also in personal care, just think of nail files. They can be used for sharpening or deburring almost all materials such as wood, metal or plastic. The Alis File Factory is run as a family business in its fourth generation. Peter Alis founded the hammer mill around 1830 for producing refined steel. Later he added file production. His son, Ernst, focused the company's production entirely on mechanized file manufacture. Walter Alis steered the company's fortunes through the war and post-war periods. After his death in 1951, his daughter Irmgard ran the factory, joined by her brother Horst in the late 1950s. The current company owner discusses the fluctuating economic situation. The file industry has always been a very problematic industry from an economic perspective because there was also an enormous amount of competition. In the Remscheid area alone, there were over a hundred companies making files. After the war, we exported extremely large quantities abroad, huge amounts, and then the Korea crisis came and the entire export business collapsed. Since then, in addition to the standard file range kept in stock, the company has found a market niche in specialized files and rasps for stonemasons, bodywork builders or animal care. No longer just the standard program, which runs on the side, but we make special types according to customer requests, according to drawings, sometimes in very small quantities, sometimes in large quantities. Everything that is out of the ordinary, which other companies can no longer produce, especially since there are practically no file factories left in Germany. Back to the production of a flat file. Anna Kadic greases the file blanks before the subsequent cutting of the teeth. This work was also performed by women in the past. During greasing, the worker applies rapeseed or turnip oil to the upper side of the blank, which is to be cut first. The underside is then chalked so that the workpiece does not slip during the cutting process. The file maker calls the linear arrangement of the teeth on the file blade the cut. The cut runs at an angle to the file's axis so that the shavings of the filed material can flow away. Skilled file maker Arno Weber sits at the cutting machine. He cuts the teeth into the file blade, which is automatically guided under the cutting chisel. A special device on the machine, the so-called pusher, holds the file in the bed of the transport slide. This prevents the file from jumping up during the cutting process. According to the type of cut, the file maker distinguishes between single cut, cross cut, or rasp cut. In a single cut, the lines of the teeth run parallel to each other. Here, Arno Weber is making a cross cut. After applying the overcut, the notches are cut at an acute angle to it.
Arno Weber is now cutting a square file. To process the different types of files, Erlis has a variety of cutting machines. With a constant stroke rate of the machine, the speed of the transport slide determines the cut number. This is the number of cuts per centimeter along the length of the file. The desired speed is set by interchangeable belt pulleys on the machine. After cutting, all files are straightened with a soft hammer. Now the file maker determines the exact length of the file through stuppen, meaning cutting to length and grinding. On the nearly finished file, the owner applies the Ellis factory brand by hand or here on a stamping machine. Depending on the customer's request, their own sales mark is also stamped. The subsequent hardening at Ellis is done in a special way. The files are placed in a salt bath, the temperature of which is between 770 and 790 degrees, depending on the type of steel. The worker uses tongs to insert the files into the hardening bath with the tip pointing downward. Hardening gives the steel a solid structure. The material should become hard on the surface and remain tough in the core. Since the files can warp again during hardening, they are quenched in two stages in a water bath. After the first stage, they are checked and, if necessary, straightened with a wooden hammer. After quenching, the files go into a second water tank for cleaning. Hardening was always a closely guarded trade secret. Every file maker had their own special recipe. For example, the files were coated with a paste before heating, the main components of which, oxhorn and salt, as well as soot, coal, claw meal, lime and other substances, have been known since the High Middle Ages. On the history of file making. A file maker was first mentioned in 1378 in Frankfurt. Since 1494, the profession has been frequently mentioned in Nuremberg and later also in Leipzig, Augsburg or Cologne. In Remscheid, the file making craft has been documented since the 18th century. The Bergisches Land quickly developed into the leading location in Germany. From about 1840, file factories emerged that achieved four to six times the output of a manual cutter who used a hammer and chisel. The mechanization of file production gradually led to the end of the handcrafted file making trade. Around 1970, files were only occasionally made by hand as special orders in the Bergisches Land. The production of the file ends with sandblasting and oiling. In the sandblasting machine, fine sand is blown onto the hardened files under a constant water supply. In this way, Willy Biesenbach removes the last remains of the hardening salt still in the cuts. Later, the worker will rub the files with a rust protection oil to protect them from corrosion and dry them in a heating channel. Then they can be packed ready for shipping and delivered. The Ellis File Factory offers a nearly authentic, now nostalgic image of the small iron industry in the Burgesses Land. Witnessing this process really highlights the difference between a mass-produced tool and one forged with centuries of regional expertise. 
I'm curious, do you have a favorite vintage tool in your workshop that simply outperforms the modern stuff? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and click to watch the next interesting archival craft on your screen.